to the Urban Wall Street Project. I'm your host, Earl Christian III. And today we're going to be talking to a special guest, Mr. Paris Fawundu, editor-in-chief of Floss Magazine. Um, Floss Magazine is one of the hottest up-and-coming magazines on the market right now. And if you haven't heard about it, you better check your newsstands because it's packed with all types of fashion tips. Who's hot, who's not, who's bubbling, who's coming out, who's making big things happen, who's about to make things happen, who's flossing. You know, so that's what it's about. So hopefully over the next 30 minutes, you hear about what's going on in the streets of New York and the streets of the city of cities all across the country because Force Magazine is definitely about to take it by storm. Um, but without further ado, I definitely would like to introduce my guest, Mr. Paris Fawundu, editor-in-chief of Force Magazine. My brother Paris, thanks for having me on the show, brother. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me, man. No question, no question. Right. So without further ado, I'd like to get right into it. Floss Magazine, if you will, for the individuals who are not who watching and not familiar with it, Tell them a little bit about Floss Magazine. Well, Floss is um, hip hop's fashion, hip hop's first fashion, entertainment, and lifestyle magazine. Um, you know, we cover everything from fashion. We cover all the entertainment, all the hot artists, and everything. We get you up first um, up on all the new designers, um, new artists sometimes, platinum artists. You know, jewelry, everything that's coming out that's hot. No doubt, no doubt. Cars, you know. No doubt. So it's Floss Magazine. How many, how many, how many years you been in? How many seasons you have right now? Do um, you right now we've been uh, uh, Floss Magazine's been out for a little over three years. So we've had about we come out every uh, four every three months quarterly. So we've had about twelve, thirteen issues out right now. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now I know, um, you know, being a writer before, magazines one of the toughest industries to break into. Definitely breaking a magazine is tough. Um, for, for individuals who may be uh, interested in uh, thinking that's the path they want to go down to, whether they want to become a writer or they want to follow in the footsteps of some of the great, you know, editors and publishers and, mm -hmm. um, of magazines, some of some of the obstacles that to look out for and how they can prepare themselves and, and how tough the skin needs to be to break into this. Man, your skin's got to be tough, man, like bulletproof tough. You know what I'm yeah, saying? No question. Because um, the industry is something, and but if you got a great idea and you stick to it, you're consistent and persistent, then it can happen. You know, I would say to somebody that's trying to break into the magazine game is like go and study other publishing companies like right. Hearst Publishing and some of the other major publishing companies out there, Johnson's and Johnson's. Study some of the publishers and kind of see what they've been through. So when times get tough for you, you don't think like, oh, I got to quit this because this, you know what I mean, I can't stand this or this has got to be the end. It kind of make your skin tougher when you know that other people out there have done what you're trying to do. No question. You know? No question. Yeah. Um, so many different, So many different areas and angles to talk about. Um, but what I, what I would like for you to tell your audience, you know, we all have our vision, and as the editor-in-chief of Floss Magazine, you have a direction that you want to see uh, your magazine go in, and you have major accomplishments and goals you want to you want to you want to make happen. What's um what is one of the greatest struggles uh, as a magazine? And we're not going to say fledgling because you're no longer fledgling. Your third season, you're there. You're established in the marketplace. You got some heavy hitters on your on your covers, so you're doing the thing. Right. But tell, tell you know tell us about some of those. Some of the, the earliest struggles trying to break in there, obstacles that you, that you face with. Well, some of the earliest struggles was even trying to get a distribution deal. Right. You know what I mean? That's just like how um, you go to the stores and you see a artist's records on the shelf or whatever, or you go to the magazine newsstands or whatever, you see magazines on the shelf. So I didn't want to take floors down the route where we had to drive it out there and put it on newsstands ourselves. So we went out and got a distribution deal with um, one of the biggest distributors in the country called Cable Distribution. Okay. And basically that was like the hardest thing. It took me about a year and a half. I mean, like, everybody said no. We even got some hell no's because we did, like, first I did a 16-page preview issue and um, shopped that around to try to get distribution. And basically nobody believed in it. People didn't think it was going to happen. They was like, well, with so many magazines out there, why would anybody want to read Floss right. when you got Source, Vibe, and XXL? And at that time I was trying to explain to them that Fashion was at the point where it was going to take over hip hop. You know, right. the music is still the music is still going to be dominant, but it's going to come to the point where fashion is going to dominate what the what the artists are saying is basically their image and what they're wearing and what they're flossing in cars, jewelry, etc., right. etc. Right. You know what I mean? So once we got the offer on a deal, it wasn't the greatest deal in the world, but once I got that offer, you know, I kind of jumped on it. Right. And then um, what happened was our first deal wasn't even with cable. Our first deal was with a smaller distribution company called Daco. Okay. Right. Cable was one of the first uh, companies I tried to get a deal with and they were one of the first that said hell no. <laughs> but then God blessed us two years later, Cable turned around and bought out Daco. Right. So we automatically got 
into cable. Ah, you understand? And now we're yeah, right, exactly. And up. now, you know, Floss is one of their favorite magazines. Every time we put out an issue and the issue sells out on a newsstand or, and the income is great, they're happy old parents, this and that. I try to always remind them, remember y'all said it wasn't gonna be nothing. <laughs> you, know, you know, and 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 it's good and it's good, you know, and what you gotta know that people watching, um, sometimes no doesn't necessarily mean no, it might mean just now. And sometimes you gotta take a no to to catch a yes. I used to say sometimes you gotta lose to win. Right. And in a situation where you might seem like you're losing, you wind up winning in the back end. Absolutely. Um, so for individuals like uh, Floss Magazine, you know, we we in the, we in the, we in the urban America in the hood, we we understand what the word flossing means. Mm -hmm. But um, for you, what um what does Floss Magazine mean to you? And when I say what does it mean to you, um, you know, it's your passion. It's what you want right, to do. Right. But what is it that you want your readers to grasp or walk away with every time they pick up a new issue of Floss Magazine? What you want them to get out of that? Well, that's a good question, man. Nobody never really asked me that, so I'm kind of glad you did ask that. Um, see, a lot of people, they look at Floss Magazine and they say, well, you know, it's kind of um, vain. You know what I mean? Like, we're, we're sending people out there to go uh, look after this and that, clothing and cars and jewelry and things that they might not be able to afford. But what I try to tell them is that Floss Magazine is an inspiration for hip-hop. It's an inspiration for the hood. No doubt. You know, it's like if you could see it, you could dream it, and you could see yourself with it, then it's, it's, it's reachable. You could get it. And that's what that's what Floss Magazine is. That's why we put it out there. We're not telling anybody to go rob somebody to get clothing or rob somebody to become the next great hip hop artist or anything like that. But it's like if you could read about 50 Cent and how he came up, and you realize 50 Cent has to wear underwear as like the rest of us have to, no then you can go out and accomplish anything that you dream about or anything that you want because it's right there inside the magazine, mm -hmm. and it's telling you most of the times we try to tell our readers. Rather than talk about who's talking about who and who's this and who, we try to tell our readers how these people came up, how they went about getting there. It's not even just rappers. Like, we deal with all aspects of the game. You know what I mean? Some of the people who own liquor companies, we've interviewed them. Um, all aspects of the game, man. Beauty people that own beauty parlors, just how they came up and how they did their thing. Styluses, you know what I mean? Right, There's right. so many, so many aspects out there. So that's really what, um, you know, I want people to get out of Floss Magazine an inspiration. Read it, and if this is the occupation you want to get into, then I want you to, once you read it in Floss Magazine, to really believe that you could do it also. You no know what question, I mean? No question. No mm question. -hmm. That's what it's about. Anything that you put your mind to, you can you can achieve. No Absolutely. question. Um, I also want to ask you, you know, I know it's so many different questions going through my mind, and I know the readers and people who are interested in being in journalism. And, but what I, one, the one thing, of course, everybody says, and you probably always hear this, of course, like you said, you touched on it mm. when you go into the deal. Mm. Well, why Floss Magazine? What differentiates you from the next magazine in the source? If you can give me one or two, one signature aspect or quality of Floss that you know without question, mm. no one else has it because... Um, yeah, I would say fashion, the fashion, fashion aspect. Mm -hmm. You know, you watch BET, you see the rappers wearing this and the R&B singers wearing that. Right. Floss, you see the you know same things before they even wear it. You see it inside of Floss, and we tell you what design it is. Sometimes, most of the times, we tell you where it's available at. Also, we have like accessories, pay, accessory pages where you can see the different accessories, shoes, watches, um, you know, anything basically accessory, perfumes, colognes that are available out there to us or whatever. Um, I mean, if you feel if you look good, you feel good most of the time. You know what I'm saying? So I would say those are that's one or two things that differentiate Floss. And again, the second thing most important is that Floss is not out there dissing anybody. We're not really if the beef is there, we'll you know we'll write it up. We're still a magazine, but majority of our our goal is to inspire our readers to want more, to do better. If you already you know if you're under a certain condition, we put people in your like in our condition in the magazine so mm -hmm. that when you see how they came out of that condition. You could also understand it and grasp that. Right. You know, it's like a, it's like a um, formula. You could kind of grasp that formula and live by it. No question. And, and you, you touched on something. You say, you know, your magazine is like harmony. It's about, we about love. We about peace. We're not here to diss anybody. Right. As a, um, as a player, major <clears throat> player in the publication game. Mm -hmm. Um, how, how, how serious is the hate in the game, brother? How Man. serious is the hate in the game? Oh, I mean, the hate is serious. There's a magazine out there right now, which I'm going to leave nameless, but, you know, they're going through their struggles, so everybody know who they are, whatever. Right. Um, about a year ago, they snatched up our um, art director from under us, thinking that was going to create, you know, differences in our wings. And it did. It was like a punch in the belly. It did. It slowed Floss down right. for a minute because now we had to go get another art director. But then what they turned around and did was hire our art director, offered them X amount of dollars and a whole bunch of other things, 
and then turned around and fired him like two weeks later. So it kind of made me sit back and realize that, you know, although we're in the same publishing game, mm -hmm. business is war and war is business. You understand what I'm saying? So now we're a lot more cautious. Our team is a lot more tighter. We kind of understand the vision out there. We understand competition from a real competitive point of view. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So we're a lot more cautious about how we move, and we're just trying to move at the speed of light. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, financially, they have more money to come at us, right. but what we have on our side is the people. Right, right. Due diligence is very important, um, and you're out there getting the game. Um, and, I, and I know as we were talking a little bit, you know, behind the scenes, mm -hmm. um, a major, major key to a magazine success, you know, of course, the quality without question, um, but that advertising. Absolutely. Advertising. Uh, talk a little bit about, um, you know, your, your, your um, how should I say, your, your endeavors to, to pick up good, good advertising and, and then kind of, the, kind of the struggles or you know, the obstacles you face trying to get the quality and the right advertising and then maintain those advertisers. How what is that like? Well, some of the um, advertising is a struggle, man, because, you know, basically we had to kind of establish ourselves first and let the advertisers know that Floss Magazine was going to be around for a few years. It's not just one of those overnight things. Right. And then um, once the advertisers start coming, we got certain advertisers that we had to turn away, like the um, X-rated advertisers, you know, mm -hmm. for the X-rated movies and things like that. We had to kind of turn one or two of them away because it was too explicit and we kind of like a family. Right. You know, we try to keep our magazine right, no available question. to everybody. No um, the second set of advertising that we kind of turned away was, um, you know, kind of U.S. military. Like, we won't, we won't accept military ads, cigarette ads, or the triple X rated, you right. know, for the obvious reasons. You know what I mean? The money is good in all those different fields, but like I said, Floss is an inspiration and we kind of, you know, we don't want to send anybody we don't want to put it in there like our readers are very faithful to the magazine right, we have right. very young readers and some older so we didn't want to put in like a military ad and you know young kids sitting there is like oh wow you know i was kind of thinking about this let me go sign up sign up you end up getting shipped to iraq you know god knows what could happen right, and we don't right. want that karma to come back upon what we're trying to create you know mm -hmm. what i mean like we're trying to create floss is like we're trying to build that into a conglomerate that'll be around for hundreds of years from now to feed our whole generations and generations after just yeah. the way hearse is you know exactly what I mean? and you know i'm happy to hear you say that you know because you know a lot of people would you know opt to take the big check yeah. um but it's important that individuals up and coming young old whoever the case may be whatever your arena you want to get into is mm -hmm. you maintain your dignity and exactly. it's about the integrity exactly. the integrity of the magazine it can't be compromised because exactly. once you compromise it your whole vision and your dream is pretty Fall. it's compromised yeah. and it's falling yeah. um but I'll ask you, were you ever met with criticism, whether from, you know, friends or internal, like, yo, we should just, we should just go ahead and take the chair? I mean, and, yeah, you know, that happens all the time because money's important, money pay bills, you know right, what I mean, no nothing question. else does. But it's like, um, when you have a vision, it's, it's very easy to cloud up that vision. Right. And I, sometimes, you know, yeah, we probably should have taken that chair because in the long run, it might not have done anything to us. But, I mean, money isn't everything. You know what I'm saying? you got to kind of do things out of the love, and then the money will come and keep your integrity along the way, like you said. And the money will come. And when the money starts coming, it's more than you can count. And the reality is, you know I mean? three years in, yeah. you haven't had to sacrifice your integrity. So right then off the top, you know, you know what? We didn't need it because right. there's many magazines that never get one issue out. Right. I've right. seen them. Right. I've, I've written for a couple, you know, and quality, but things don't happen. So it, I think that is another blessing because when you stick to your guns, like you said, and you and you and you hold your head like, nah, we're not going to go there. Right. Um, it speaks volumes beyond just you know, um, you know, just being a publisher. It shows that we are we are responsible. Right. We're taking a responsibility um, for our readers because, you like you said, you know, unfortunately, the, the urban community and the, the, I mean, I'm not sure your demographic, but I would I would presume it's probably anywhere between maybe the 18 to 32, yeah. maybe a little bit more, but definitely that 18 to 24 strong. You right, know? right. That's yeah. that's the I mean, we, we the hip hop generation, but that's the primary. They right. the, the, all the new colorful clothing and the right. pages and all the new accessories and gadgets. That's that 18 to 25 market. Absolutely. And and those are the ones that the uh, you know the soldiers are standing outside the trains mm -hmm. and outside the high schools right. and everywhere in urban America they are. Right. You go up to the burbs, you don't see all the recruiting right. officers. Exactly. But they in our hood. We exactly. already know the cigarette commercials, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? We know cigarettes is bad so and we know they would like to throw the checks just to get that extra money. Exactly. Um, and of course they always feel that you know urban America is driven by the mathematics of money. Right. So when you come across, you know, uh, executives and who, who who are pretty, you know, steadfast in their decision not to uh 
not to sell out, not to go to him. I saw Nas one time on one of his shows, and somebody was trying to, I think Chorus was trying to get him mm -hmm. to do a big commercial. He was like, right. nah, we can't, we can't do that. Because you know what? Somebody else will take it, but we don't necessarily need that. I right. like that. Right. Um, what I want to talk about, you know, before I get you here, is um, just direction. What do you see? What do you see for Floor? Five years, you know. What's, what's, what's some? What's some? If, if I can just peek into your head a little bit, I know you can't let. You know, no one wants to let. let out. Out. want to let out. You know, you know, yeah, like the Jews. Yeah, yeah. Jump but on but and run just, with a, it. just a couple things that you know what. Uh, you know what? Even if they try it, because mm. of the way I've constructed it in my head, it ain't gonna come out. You know, say, so, or just what you well, see. I mean, five years like, from now, I see Floss Magazine being the number one magazine on the newsstand. No you know, as far as urban. Um, a lot of the magazine out there, the only reason that we're, we're not number one right now is because to grow it takes time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a child being born. A child is not going to go from um, being one year old to 20 year old within a day. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Or within a few days or a few years. It's going to take 20 years. So five years from now, Floss will be at the point where, um, you know, it'll be the number one magazine in the market. That's right now is. we're leading as far as um, setting trends, as far as the covers. Mm -hmm. Like we were the only magazine that had T.I. on the cover first on his last venture. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, T.I.'s album came out. We were fortunate enough to be able to do his album release party. We were fortunate okay. enough on the, on the night that our, that our magazine hit the newsstand. We had a launch party for the magazine, which T.I. attended, a bunch of other celebrities attended. And, um, you know, for that, we received a plaque from him, a platinum plaque from him. That's you know sad. what I'm saying? And, um, you know, it's just like right now we're leading. So five years from now, Floss is going to start to become the conglomerate that it's going to continue to be. You know what I'm saying? The growth is like the growth period, the ideas and everything is unstoppable. That's what it it's is. It's unstoppable. You have a lot of businesses out there that are, um, even other magazines that are small, their quality is real good, mm -hmm. but... Nobody believes in them enough to interject money into them or enough to bring them into an umbrella where they can kind of, you know, like an in incubator right. where they can kind of grow. And that's what that's part of that's part of what Floss's responsibility is going to be is to bring some of these other companies and um, um, that have valuable projects mm -hmm. into Floss Publishing Incorporated and to help them grow as well yeah. as help Floss Publishing grow. That's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. That's always that's always a beautiful thing, man. You know, uh, you know, I just. You know, every time I see young brothers, you know, we we doing so many things and have vision and, and direction because that's that's one of the main you know main themes of my show when I talk about it. My show is an Urban Wall Street Project, mm. but it's important for people at home to know when we talk about Urban Wall Street Project, we're talking about finances, we're talking about educating your mind or being literate in the area of finances, but we're also talking about recognizing you know where you're spending your money, how you're spending your money, urban businesses, urban entrepreneurs that's doing their thing um, and that have gold, that have integrity, that's not willing to sell out mm -hmm. for you know a check just because the check is nice and knowing that that particular product or that particular philosophy um, is not one that they would adopt to. Right. Um, but I want to ask you, which are, which are, you know, all magazines have the, you know certain sections. But for you, what uh, what particular aspect of uh, Floss magazine? What do you think is a uh, if, if 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 it can identify, is probably the the favorite section of your magazine. You know, certain magazine might have who's who or who's bubbling or or mm -hmm. word on the street is. Does the Floss magazine have a section that people like you? That 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 particular part of the magazine, we we we, we like that. It's kind of a consensus. The um, section where we get that consistently is like our accessory section. Yeah. Yeah, because we. You know, we try to put some of the hottest accessories out there, like, before anybody gets up on them. Like, for the ladies, there's always the accessory section. For the guys, it's the same thing, cause especially the ladies, though, because, you know, they like to see all the new shoes and perfumes and purse pocketbooks and, mm -hmm. that, you know, everything that's coming out. Right. Same thing for gentlemen. We got um, shoes, sneakers, um, jewelry, colognes, perfumes. So it's like pages of those. They love to see, like, oh, wow, that's hot. Our other favorite section would be probably our... our money profile section because mm -hmm. whoever we feature in that issue in the money profile section actually tells the reader how they made their money right and the struggles trials and tribulations that they went through to make that money no question you know what i'm saying yeah so those um consistently has been the fit the subject the um areas where people are like yo man you should get more pages of that okay, you know okay. so yeah now when you um now how do you identify like i mean are you how do you reach how do you reach um the uh, makers and producers of these accessories is it a, is it a struggle is it it's like a list or a database or a bank you can go to or you just is it just about networking and people reaching out to you wanting to get an ad in the spot of the magazine yeah i would say all of the above all of you the know above. yeah all of the above um it's gotten to the point now where you know we've been out for three years so a lot of those companies are now coming to us and saying this is what we got coming out yeah, this was like coming it. out for 2007 don't you know this is next or whatever you know what i'm saying right. sometimes we got to turn them away because there's so many other things out there right that 
we as people within the community feel like, okay, we would wear that. No, we won't wear that. Mm-hmm. Even though it's new, we still won't touch right, it. Right. So, you know, some certain things we got to kind of put to the side, but majority of it is, you know, it's, it's there, it's on and popping, it's hot. Okay, okay. I mean, if I didn't ask this earlier, I mean, you know, I, exactly, it's never an in, inappropriate time to ask, but what, um, what made you, uh, you know, what made you decide, I want to do a magazine? You know, I, I, might, you might, I know we've talked about it and you've alluded to some of the aspects, but mm-hmm. if you could define, like, what was that defining moment? You know, we all had that defining moment in our life. You say, you know what, this is what it's going to be. This is what I'm going to invest, put my investment in. I'm going to make it happen. What, what was that defining moment for you that led you to know, you know, magazine, publishing, that's what it is. That's yeah. where I am. Well, I mean, uh, I was working with an independent record label called Seal Entertainment, which I was one of co-owners of. Mm-hmm. I didn't start it, but I was co-owners of it. And uh, we had some really good artists and everything, and we were kind of like doing a bunch of different things, traveling around the country, we're selling different records here and there. But it came to the point where, um, it came to the point where like my future depended on the artist's recording. So the artist wasn't in the mood to record because he was having beef with his girlfriend, or she didn't want him to go out of town or whatever. Then there goes my future, there goes my paycheck. You know what I mean? And it got mm-hmm. to the point where I felt like. Any day now, if any of these artists are like, okay, you know what, I'm quitting this record game. Now I got to go out and find another quality artist on an independent scale, or we're gonna sit here and starve. Mm-hmm. So basically, in one of those moments where I'm sitting there and just, you know, kind of seeing no light in the tunnel, it's like a dark cave. I'm sitting there like, damn, what else could I do? And um, it came to me as a child. Like my mom used to make me take out the garbage every night. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I go in the incinerator room and see copies of Jet magazines on right, the floor. Right. Sit there, flip through it, like, wow, this is interesting. Then they had the little lady of the Jet magazine, right. like, oh, she's right, off the chain. Right. So I figured, you know, me, I always like dressed and I always like the finer things or whatever. Why don't I put something together that, you know, would kind of cater to someone like myself, which would be a magazine that catered to fashion, but at the same time came from the hip hop aspect. Right. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized there was nothing like it out there. The more I realized the different avenues that this magazine could also cover that's not being touched. You know, and that was kind of basically the seed or the birth of Floss Magazine, the concept. Yeah, man. Yeah. I like that. I like that nigga. And floss. Floss. Why that word? Floss. Why, not what floss. Else? Floss, right? Yeah, I mean, what that's, else is that's, like... That's what we're doing. Yeah, floss. yeah, exactly. Um, there was no, you know, there's not too many options. Like, we had other names like Escalade Magazine. Right. And, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Things that sound pretty corny right now that right, I put right. down. But, you okay. know, floss was... Yeah, and, and, I, don't, yeah. and I think floss is transcend time for sure. Yeah. Um, um, but definitely, on a, you know, we talked about a lot of different things and touched on so many different aspects. But on a serious note, when it really gets down to the business, because the reality is people that are watching at home, young young journalists up on the rise, mm-hmm. aspiring writers, whether you're a freelance writer or you know you want to write for a magazine or you want to get into that industry, um, as an editor-in-chief, you have writers. You have mm-hmm. people that go out and they might interview, you know, up-and-coming star. They might interview a multi-mega star. Mm-hmm. You know, we got, if you can quickly tell me, how, 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 what's, some, what's some advice you would give to a young person if they ever, ever face what happened to interview a major celebrity or star for a magazine? Oh, man, the advice I could give is, like, don't be nervous. Like, we had 50 Cent on one of our cover, um, as one of our cover story when he was first coming out. And basically, the writer that interviewed him was intimidated by him. Like, the writer was just basically nervous, like, kind of scared to ask him certain things. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think some of the things that could help with that is preparation. Definitely. You know what I mean? Preparation. You know, preparation builds your confidence up because you have knowledge of the subject or you have knowledge of the person. So it kind of builds your confidence up. So when you're sitting in front of that person, you're still going to be nervous because, you know, guys like 50 and some of the bigger artists in the industry have a lot of presence, and they kind of fill up a room. So when you come in, it's like, wow, that's 50 Cent, you know what I mean? But as long as you're prepared, you know, that that, that would be, like, my biggest advice to them, that preparation, study. Um, If you're interested in that field, look at other writers prior to yourself. Look at writers that have written books. Look at different people. Try to study their life and their background, Mm kind of see you know, what their angle that they go at sometimes. And maybe, you know, you as a writer can create a niche for yourself where you start off with a small magazine or a floss magazine and then, you know, kind of move on to creating your own books and doing other things, writing scripts or whatever for movies and things like that, you know. No question, no question. Well, listen, um, I definitely hope, every you know, if people are watching at home, if you're interested in becoming a journalist, becoming a writer, you learn something. Of course, Floss Magazine, once again, check your newsstands. It's one of the hottest up-and-coming magazines. Been in the game three seasons. 
30 more to come and coming. Um, I want to thank my guest, Mr. Paris Fawondu, for coming out. Absolutely. Um, and we're going to keep you informed. So you can, at, the end of the, at the end of the segment, you can check out the um, credits. You can reach Mr. Fawondu at Floss Magazine, Um and check him out on other areas as well. So, um, once again, it's the Urban Wall Street Project. Everything that we do here is about uplifting the community, informing the community, educating the community, and um, letting you know there's nothing you can't do. So, once again, it's been the Urban Wall Street Project coming at you from so many different angles. Floss Magazine is hot. Check it out on newsstands right now. Keep your eyes open. As always, keep your head up. See you next time. Peace. Oh, right.